God. You know, this is truly a movement from looking religious to living righteous. And what Jesus is doing now, having having come to give righteousness as a free gift, he is training us in how to live that righteousness. Because when you've been given new life in Christ Jesus, it requires a new lifestyle. Okay? So he says, and, and again, I'm reading from the New American Standard Version of the Bible. And it says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. And then he goes on, and we'll get into this in a second, when you give to the poor, when you pray, when you fast, you know, it's about that. But if he says, and I think this is a good translation, practicing your righteousness. You see, because when we are, we are first born again, we are babes in Christ. And there is a process of maturity and growing in Christ. And like anything, practice is important. Jesus is not through saying, be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. And I'm sure you've heard the saying, practice makes perfect. In Hebrews 5.14, it's written, the solid food of the word is for the mature, for the mature, who because of practice has trained his senses to discern between good and evil. So, you know, we have this righteousness which was a gift from the Father. We've been made right with the Father. And that should lead to action, to works. Faith without works is dead being by itself. So we need to go out and make a habit and grow and practice doing the things that are the fruit of the righteousness, the love of God that's been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, as Paul says in his letter to the Romans, right? So we need to practice this. It's an ongoing thing. It's not an act. It's a life. It's not a single thing that you do. It's a life that you lead. But don't beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Right? It's not about us being seen by people in what we're doing. But interestingly enough, think about this. Jesus had just said moments ago in the, in the time frame of this thing actually happening, just in, in chapter 5, back in verse 16, he said, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good work and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So he's not saying that people aren't supposed to see the righteousness that we do. What it really boils down to is who gets the credit. Are we doing these things because we want people to see us and think about us? Or are we doing these things because we want people to be touched by God and see God? It's about who's... When you do these things, when you practice and God uses you, whose work is it? God's work. Well, then why do we ever take the glory? Why do we? Yeah, why do we take the credit? You know the answer to that. A simple little word. Pride. Yes. Begins with a P and it ends with an E. Got an R I D in the middle. <laughs> that could make a song. song. Huh? <laughs> you know, I just want to share this. Years ago, uh, Alice and I were living in California. We had started that ministry that many of you know about, the M.D. Solomon Institute. And, uh, what is now the biggest Christian radio station or company in the world, I believe, Salem, Salem Communications, it was much smaller back then because of the regulations regarding communications. And they wanted to sponsor one of the seminars that I did, um, basically out of the headquarters in Oxnard, California. So I went down, we were living up in Modesto, and I drove down to Oxnard and I met with the general manager of uh, Salem Communications. And Nice young guy. I mean, really. And we really hit it off. And it's the first time I met him. And I was sitting in his office, and we had coffee, and we had fellowship, and we were just sharing. And of course, he didn't know me, but they were talking about now sponsoring one of the seminars I do. So he's trying to get to know me. And at that time, we had come back recently from living in Central America, out in the bush as missionaries. And I had a, an adventure or two. And I'm going on, and he's asking me all these questions. And he looked at me, and he said, how come I never heard of you? And that stopped me a minute, and I said to him, well, have you ever heard of Jesus? And he looked at me, you know, what, what, he said, of course I have. But I said, well, then I've been doing my job. <laughs> because my job is not to get you to hear about me or know me, nor is yours. It's not about getting people to recognize us and see us. It's about getting people to see Jesus Christ through what he's doing in us. And that is so important here. It's not that you're not, people aren't supposed to see your quote-unquote works. 
It's about who's supposed to be glorified when they see your works. Is it your work or is it his work? And all too often, it's our work. We come up with programs and we do things on our own that really aren't the Lord. And it's easy to call them the Lord, but that doesn't make it so.